Hi everyone, my name is Sonia and my research is on vitamin D deficiency and myopathy. Vitamin D is critical to our health. Some of its functions include modulation of cell growth, immune and neuromuscular function, reduction of inflammation, bone growth and remodeling, it promotes calcium absorption, and it helps with the maintenance of serum calcium and phosphate concentrations. So it has very critical roles in our body and the system. Vitamin D is present naturally in very few foods. Animal products does contain the most amount of vitamin D out of all the natural products that we do have. Um, since it is available in such a little amount of foods, you'll see a lot of fortified foods on the shelves in the grocery stores, such as fortified milk and juices. Another source are dietary supplements, of course, and ultraviolet rays from the sunlight. This is an example of how vitamin D is metabolized in our body uh, in a simpler version, but I'll go ahead and explain. Vitamin D undergoes two hydroxylations in the body for activation. The first occurs in the liver, where it converts vitamin D to 25 hydroxy vitamin D. And the second is the second occurs in the kidney and it forms the active 25 D hydroxy vitamin D. Vitamin D recommendations are general for a huge population from the ages four to 70 years. The recommended amount of vitamin D is 600 IUs per day. And then above 70 years old, 71, 71 years old and older, the recommended amount is 800 IUs per day. Vitamin D deficiency differs a little bit between children and adults. Vitamin D deficiency in children is known as rickets. As you can see from the screen, there's some deformation of the bones in children. And then if vitamin D deficiency occurs later on in your life as adults, then it's known as osteomalacia, where softening of the bones occur. Myopathy is another consequence of vitamin D deficiency, where you would see muscle weakness, muscle pain, a prolonged time to peak muscle contraction, and a prolonged time to peak muscle relaxation. Myopathy is any skeletal muscle disorder that directly affects muscle fibers. It's very specific in its definition that it does not arise secondarily from disorders of the nervous system, and it is characterized by muscular degeneration and weakness. Myopathy is seen in those who are deficient in vitamin D alone, and it's also seen a lot in those who overconsume alcohol. Um, but there's some differences in the causes that are pretty unsure due to lack of studies. Um, in vitamin D deficiency, myopathy is mostly caused from an inadequate vitamin D intake as well as a lack of sun exposure. In alcoholism, um, it's also caused by an inadequate vitamin D intake and a lack of sun exposure, but it's also seen in alcoholics who have liver dysfunction and those who do not have liver dysfunction. It's pretty interesting and it's also seen um, because of malabsorption. About 40 to 60 percent of alcoholics are estimated to suffer from alcoholic related myopathy. Most of these individuals do have low vitamin D levels, but a proof of a connection between the two is still yet to be found, again, because of the lack of studies and research that are that's done on this topic. So that brings us to my research question, which is, does vitamin D deficiency contribute to alcoholic-related myopathy? My hypothesis is vitamin D deficiency is a contributor to alcoholic-related myopathy. So my null hypothesis is vitamin D deficiency does not contribute to alcoholic-related myopathy. Research population so the diagnosis of myopathy in every individual is very important in the study. Um, 
since we'll be using vitamin D supplementation to see if symptoms of vitamin D deficiency are reversed, um, it, all individuals have to show um, muscle weakness with osteomalacia because um, it's only in cases of muscle weakness with osteomalacia that vitamin D supplementation can easily reverse symptoms. There are other symptoms of myopathy that are not as easily reversed from vitamin D supplementation. So we have to be very specific when we choose our samples. And our sample size will include 50 men and women per group uh, from the ages of 18 to 35 years. There will be a mixture of quantitative and qualitative methods under the quantitative methods. So individuals will be tested, their vitamin D levels will be tested using the most accurate test to measure vitamin D in the body, which is the 25 hydroxy vitamin D test. Those who have less than 12, um, talking about levels of vitamin D in their body are associated with vitamin D deficiency. So those are the people who will be considered for this study. Anyone over the levels of 12 won't show those symptoms of myopathy, therefore um, they won't be eligible for this research. A p-value of 0 0.05 is assigned to test the efficiency of the null hypothesis in the study. This means that there will be a 50-50 chance that our findings are significant. Um, a p-value of less than 0 0.05 means that it is significant. And I mean, over 0 0.05, it's the opposite. So in, in, insignificant. For the qualitative category, um, myopathy symptoms will be observed by a neurological exam. Um, this tests the ability to rise from sitting, coordination, the ability to walk, and deep tendon reflexes, which we, most of us know as a knee-jerk reaction, we can remember as being kids, or if you're an adult as well. Um, osteomalacia will also be observed by the bone density test to detect softening of the bones because osteomalacia is characterized by softening of the bones. An initial questionnaire will be given. Um, just, this is just to track the individual's diets, their alcohol intake, drinking behaviors, and demographics. And just to be clear, um, all ethnicities are welcome for this study, but it's just age group that matters. And a consent form, of course, will be given as well to, for ethical reasons. This research will consist of three different groups. The first group will consist of those who are vitamin D deficient, and they also will show proximal myopathy that is characterized by muscle weakness. The second group will also be vitamin D deficient, but um, they will have alcohol-related alcohol myopathy characterized by muscle weakness. And then the third group will be a control group. So at the end of the study, if vitamin D levels rise from vitamin D supplementation in the alcoholic group, vitamin D is proposed as a cause of myopathy. Um, vitamin D levels should be similar in both groups. So those who are deficient in vitamin D, um, they should naturally, their vitamin D levels should naturally go up with the vitamin D supplementation that's given to them each day for 30 days. But um, if vitamin D is actually the cause of myopathy of alcoholics, then the same will go for them and the vitamin, T, vitamin D supplementation will also treat their myopathy symptoms. Each group will take 2000 IUs of vitamin D orally per day. Um, this is the amount that is sufficient enough to uh, to increase the levels of vitamin D in those who have osteomalacia and myopathy symptoms. Um, individuals will be required to track supplementation intake each day, so we're being sure that everything's sufficient. The study will be a total of three months. 
and results will be tracked at the end of each month. There will be paired results, meaning that all groups will be compared against each other to see the, the correlation, the similarities, the differences. Um, a line graph will also be used to track these correlations. And a data, the data will be reported confidentially each month to every individual so they know how their levels are rising or not. The benefits of this study, um, there are very few studies done on this topic, very few studies of the relationship between alcohol myopathy and vitamin D deficient myopathy, very few clinical studies of therapeutic options of alcohol-related myopathy. Um, we do know that alcohol abuse is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in this country. And I think these studies can open the possibility of vitamin D supplementation to treat and or prevent alcoholic myopathy. And since alcohol abuse is such a huge cause, cause of morbidity and mortality, um, anything we can do to treat the conditions or underlying causes or anything would be helpful in this, um, in this category. Thank you.